compare Nigel's uh, performance this year to kind of what he did last year? Is he playing at the same level? Are there areas where uh, he can get back to that he was at last year? Uh, you know, we, we asked a lot more of him last year. Uh, when we lost Jordan, you know, in the Washington Redskins game a year ago, my, Nigel had to play out of position. He had to play our middle linebacker, and that really wasn't, you know, what he had, uh, what he had done prior to that. So uh, it's a little bit different this year. Um, you know, I still notice him a lot. I think him and Jordan have a nice uh, rapport, so to speak, out on the field as far as being able to communicate and talk through coverages and, and if there's a mistake where the mistake was and stuff so you know he's still have been a, a great part of our defense and I think he continues the one thing I've always admired about Nigel Nigel's really football smart and he can think ahead of problems he can see where there's pick splits by a wide receiver if he's got the back man to man and he can get himself out of jams that way so um, he's been important for us and uh, I think he's I think, still think he's playing at a, at a high level for us, and uh, hopefully he'll continue to do that. Speaking so. of Jordan, so, uh, obviously midway point of the season, you mentioned uh, missed basically half of last season. Do you think he's back to where he was? Did you see any rust? Or anything? Well, I think there's always rust, you know, because you're not playing, even though mentally you probably are in tune with the game, you're not, you're not having the competitive snaps behind you. Uh, that gives you that muscle memory, so to speak, to be able to react and play things accordingly. But I think he's back to where he was. He's, you know, he's always been a very bright guy. Um, I would say this: we put a lot of a lot of things on him as far as managing our defense, which I think is, you know, in some ways is probably a backhanded compliment to him. You know, he can handle it. Uh, so I think he's back to where he was uh, prior to the uh, Achilles tear in the Washington game. And uh, hopefully he'll uh, continue to play well for us. We need him to. Overall, though, the, the turnovers haven't been there to takeaways for you guys. And he was a guy that was always around the ball, it seemed like, for a few years there. This year, not so much. There was one, uh, the one that he deflected to Camus, but, uh, you know, the really – is that something, is that just the luck of the draw there, or how do you, how do you I think so. I think they kind of come in bunches when you get turnovers. Um, I, I just think, you know, he's, again, that's, there was a couple of situations, I think, a year ago, or, uh, yeah, uh, two years ago, in fact, <laughs> when he led the league in terms yeah. of linebackers and interceptions. There was a couple of things here where he got, in the, where he was in man-to-man, -man, you know, and he made a nice, uh, cut on the receiver, that type of thing. Um, that was a little bit different. Uh, hasn't had as many of those opportunities this year. But again, I still think as overall as a defense, those those turnovers kind of come in bunches. You know, you you go through a dry spell and then all of a sudden you have two or three games and all of a sudden you got three or four a game and you say, what's different about it? It's nothing. Mm -hmm. You know, you just all of a sudden now a guy, when he tackles, happens to put a shoulder pad on the ball where before it wasn't happening in the right. first couple of games. So uh, hopefully this last half of the season that will turn around for us a little bit and we can get some turnovers because that obviously, as you guys know, you know, we had the turnover by Avante Maddox in the Jacksonville mm -hmm. game. That gives you a chance to put some points on the board, sometimes change the momentum of the game. So in your experience, it's not a matter of emphasis. It does seem kind of random, the turnovers, but that is a big difference from last year. Like you said, if you get one more game, uh, the defensive performance might look totally different. Do you emphasize it more, or like you said, just kind of say they're going to come in the second half? Well, we emphasize it all the time. I mean, if you come out to practice, a lot of the drills that I'll do will be turnover type drills where we're trying to actively strip a receiver or strip a ball carrier from the ball. But when you get those, I think there's some randomness to it. When do they come? I, you know, it's not all of a sudden we get three and all of a sudden somebody's going to come back. Well, you worked on it this week. Well, we work on it every week. You know, it's always just part of our DNA. I think around the league, everybody works on creating and getting turnovers. The randomness of when you get them, I think, is a little bit of what we're talking about. Sometimes they just seem to come in bunches. So, Jordan was very disruptive as a blitzer in the win over Jacksonville. What makes him very effective in that regard? Well, if the truth be told, uh, the the sacks that he had in the Jacksonville game, he wasn't an active blitzer. He was a guy that was man-to-man -man on a back that added when the back stayed in on protection to pick up one of the other blitzers. So 
I think the one thing that he's done a nice job of is that when we do call pressures and he's not one of the active blitzers, he's done a nice job of adding himself into the pressure when his coverage decides to block. And uh, he's had a nice feel for that. And, you know, he, he got a couple of those in the Jacksonville game. The back ended up scanning across and trying to block one of the uh, other unblocked blitzers. And he adds himself, and we call it a junk sack. You kind of junk it up, and you, you get a way to get into a get the sack. So good for him, good for us. As a linebacker coach, how different is a Dallas week not having to worry about Jason uh, it's it's better. There's no doubt. I mean, he was a go he was a comfort uh, blanket for the quarterback. He was a go-to guy. He's so sure-handed, so, such a savvy route runner. Um, that that threat isn't the same as it was in years past. Although they're very capable at tight end, I'm not saying that. But but again, uh, I don't know. They've got different go-to guys now than a year ago. You know, Cole Beasley is a go-to guy, I think, for him on third down, a guy they feel comfortable, can get open, uh, has great hands, you know, that type of thing. I think they've just kind of spread it out a little bit different than what they did a year or two ago uh, now that Witten's retired. And, uh, but they still have some guys you've got to pay attention to. On some of the throws we see completed to the perimeter, kind of in front of the corners. I know Jim has said in the past sometimes the linebackers or even the safeties aren't getting enough width or depth with so mm -hmm. much on their plate with the RPOs and play action right. and stopping the run. I mean, how do you kind of make sure there's a balance and they are kind of getting out there and taking those away? Well, you, you, you coach a lot of things by down and distance sometimes, and there's going to be certain situations and certain formations that for lack of a better term, you can say that run isn't the primary concern. And so we try to tune into those things to try to give them an advantage. But I think at the end of the day, uh, again, when you're predominantly a zone coverage team, if you're making teams throw the ball in front of the zone, I think you're doing the right things. Because again, uh, drives get interrupted by holding penalties. Uh, drives get interrupted by drop passes. And then all of a sudden now those five-yard gains or six-yard gains underneath the zone don't become such a great uh, angst for you on defense anymore when you realize that team's ability to put together a 12 or 14 play drive, take the ball down 80 yards, chunk it five, six yards of play, that doesn't happen very often. The, the statistics tell you that, again, there's going to be something in that drive that's going to force them to be in a third and long or a second and long. And now all of a sudden that offensive coordinator is not dialing the check down routes out anymore. He's not throwing the ball up in front of the zone. The quarterback's now getting greedy. He's trying to get find windows to get the ball behind the linebackers. And those are the things you've got to try to prevent. Big picture, what are your thoughts of the linebacking core as a whole through the first half of the season? Well, I like them, as, <laughs> I like them a lot. Uh, you know what, we, we've, we've made our mistakes. Uh, there's room for improvement, but I think every position coach here would tell you the same thing about their crew. I like the way we're trending. I really like our group. Uh, they're hardworking people. They take their job serious. They've been very professional when they come into the building. Um, winning and losing is important to them. Uh, I don't think I've got guys in my room that are just here collecting a paycheck. And, that, and I've been on some teams where that's been true. And uh, so that's been a real positive for me as a coach. I, I really enjoy it. And, Again, we'll continue to work on the things we need to work on. We're not a finished product by any means, but uh, uh, they work at it, and that's all I can ask. You can pinpoint one of your linebackers. Which one has made the biggest progression from training camp up until this point? Oh, that's a hard one. Uh, you know, uh, again, I could say that uh, that's nah, hard. Uh, there's a lot of guys that come to mind. I look at Kamu, uh, you know, was a special teams player a year ago and is kind of developed into having a role for us on defense. He would be a guy. I look at Nate Gary and the fact that he was a safety in college and now he can play all three positions for us on defense. He comes to mind. And I say that and I'm still in the back of my mind holding the Jordan Hickses and the Nigel Bradhams and, and, uh, and the Leroy Reynolds, the guys are in that room battling every day. I mean, they, they all have a role and they're all important in some aspects, but Probably the two young guys, you know, as far as in terms of how far have they come. It's probably Kamu and Nate Gary. What have you seen out of Jordan Hicks coming off that injury from last year through the first half of the season? Uh, uh, are you asking how has he progressed? Yes. 
I think he's done a nice job. You know, somebody had asked me earlier, there's always that little period of trying to knock some rust off, uh, and that was a little bit uh, to him. But we ask him to do a lot in terms of managing our defense, getting us in and out of checks, uh, being able to make adjustments depending on what he sees formation, and he's really done a nice job. He's super smart, um, and I'm glad we got him. I think he's just continued to get better and better as he gets a better feel for what offenses are trying to do against us.